the Nikon PB5. This is one of the few bellows that Nikon made. We'll take a closer look at it and I will give you my thoughts on the bellows. Here's the front of the bellows and the most notable part of it is that there is a small hole with a lock for a slide copying mount to go on there, the PS5. And mine came with an exposure dial for slide copying. That was the intended use of the bellows. You can also do macro photography with it, which was what I was interested in. But that was what it is designed for, and there are some drawbacks, in my opinion, when looking at the other bellows Nikon made. So the front and rear standards can both move, lock, and unlock and adjust in the same way. Going over, there's you know a ruler on the side, give you an idea of the adjustments. Here's the rear, able to unlock and adjust it forward and back. My issues with the bellows start when we take a look underneath. There are two different tripod mountings, but there is no focusing rail. The PB4 and PB6, which are other models of bellows, both have a focusing rail, which would be very helpful. And you could, of course, unlock and just move the bellows, the both standards together to focus, but that's going to get really annoying really quickly. And while the other two models are more expensive than the PB5, I, you know, you pay for that feature and that's going to be a big time saver. Could also possibly mount this to a rail, but then things start getting strange with how heavy it is going to be. The next issue with the bellows comes when we want to mount a camera to it. So I've got a D750 here and the hand grip gets in the way of the camera being able to be mounted to the bellows. So I'll go and hopefully you can kind of see it's going to hit. To get around that I have a PK13 extension tube and I can there we go put that on the camera or the bellows and then attach the camera to it and then it kind of becomes a weight issue and annoying to have to have the extension tube to get under the bellows and the weighting gets really strange where it's really heavy in the back as the D750 is going to be heavier than most of the film cameras I think all of them probably that were out when this was designed there is one nice feature that this bellows has, and that is the ability to rotate the orientation of the camera using this little lever right there. And then just starting to take a look at the weight of things. The bellow comes in at almost two pounds, 830 grams. You're gonna need the extension tube, raises it to 930 grams, which is probably putting it over two pounds. Then let's add the camera in, 1,770 grams, and if we go back, almost four pounds worth of gear, and that's without adding a lens to it or a focus rail, it's just going to be really heavy, and I'm not sure I want to stick that on one of my tripods, worry about the stability could just use a macro lens instead. One advantage that a bellows has that a macro lens doesn't is you do have the ability to get accessories. This is a BR2A and the BR6 that will allow you to reverse mount lenses, um, in this case 52 millimeter front threaded lenses, onto the bellows, get some extension and get magnification that way. Though if I was gonna go through that and the hassle of buying all the accessories. I think that the PB4, because it has tilt shift and a focus rail, or the PB6, because it has a focus rail, might be better choices overall. And then the other last thing is that there are bellows lenses, Nick or P bellows lenses, that are designed without the extension built into them. Those would be good to use with a bellows, but again, 
those are several hundred dollars, why not use them with maybe a nicer bellows? Now let's take a look at the value that the PB5 offers compared to the alternatives, which I'm going to say mainly the PB4 and the PB6. So I'm going to have links down below. There'll be affiliate links to where you can check prices on eBay or Amazon. Those change over time and any purchase you make through those helps me make videos on stuff that really has a very limited interest. So when I took a look at the eBay listings, the PB5 I saw as low as 50 bucks. Someone got a good deal on it, and but generally sitting around 80 to 100 dollars, which I mean seems alright. It's a, it is a really well built bellows, despite the couple issues I have with it. But when we look at the price of the PB6, which in my opinion would be the next step up, it has a focusing rail on the bottom. It was only $100 to $110 with the ability to, if you're lucky, maybe you spend some time, you're patient, you can probably get a better deal. Then the PB4 has a focusing rail and has tilt shift functionality. And I believe the both of them also have the ability to have a slide copier attached to the front. But the PB4, you can, $110, $120. So unless you were getting a ridiculous deal on a PB5 or you just wanted to use it for slide copying, I can't, I mean it's very large, it's bulky, I wouldn't want to travel with it. I'm having a, you know, a tough time thinking of things that I really get excited about using this with. And then there are other options, like here I have a Novoflex bellows. This is an M42 mount that I've adapted with a, you know, a M42 to Nikon adapter, and it fits right on the camera. I don't have to use an extension tube on it or anything. Um, it is a little loose up front and can't over, you know, get it really locked down. It'll sit slightly askew, but if I was going hiking or something like that, going outside, this is small and light enough to where I could take it and potentially use it. And I don't know what kind of uh, attachments there are to reverse mount lenses and things like that or how they compare to the Nikon stuff. But there are other options out there if you look. So to wrap things up, I don't think that I'm going to be keeping my PB5 bellows. I don't think I would recommend anyone really go out there and hunt for one. I think the real value is the PB4. I'm probably going to eventually sell this one and start shopping around, get a good deal on a PB4 and maybe have it $20, $30 total into that to get that upgrade. And that'll do it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. I like making videos on vintage photography stuff, lots of things that don't have a lot of YouTube videos, maybe none at all. So if you'd like to see those, make sure to hit subscribe. There'll be more in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.